Hey y'all, I'm back. <laughs> I'm still I'm still coughing and struggling. But <laughs> I'm here. I'm so sorry, y'all. If y'all see that it's some gaps in between these days, it's because some days I can talk louder than I can on others. <laughs> y'all stick with me. I apologize. I'm I'm trying my best. So the la the I don't even know where to start. Y'all, we're gonna talk about healing. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get our di di dictionary definition. Slow down. Look, let me slow down. Take a pause. Because clearly, <laughs> clearly. All right. So, y'all know I got my, my handy dandy. It ain't a lot of notes today, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Y'all see that one page? That's it. <laughs> That's all she wrote. But it ain't all you gonna get. <laughs> all right. So, Healing. Healing is the process of making or becoming sound or healthy again. Um, I, I'm, I'm going through my healing process, y'all. Trying to make healthy. All right. So, um, you know, let's see where I want to begin. So, healing is one is therapeutic, right? Um, there's three different types of healing. One is primary healing. So, you know, y'all go to y'all primary physician. Y'all like that, don't know? She's smart sometimes. <laughs> y'all go to y'all primary physician, which is your, your primary care doctor. Then they will actually, um, send you out to a secondary physician. So there is, um, the second type of healing is secondary. Um, the last one is, um, oh, y'all, I, I know the word. Tre yep, that's it right there. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Treasury, right? I don't know if that's really how you pronounce it. Me and pronunciation and spelling is not the best. Um, but y'all get what I'm look, y'all get y'all picking up what I'm putting down. If you don't know, it's called it's T E R T I A R Y. There you go. All right. So, and this is usually dealing with like wound healing. Um but I'm telling y'all this because, you know, you got your three stages and we're going to go through some stuff or your three types of healing. Um, when you, for me, when I was thinking about, when I was looking over this and thinking about stuff, everyone goes through various stages of healing, right? Um, it just depends on the type of wound and its severity. So depending on how bad you are sick or how bad you are um, wounded, you're going to have to go through a few stages and, and the, just like when they talk about, depending on you being sick, let's talk about, um, let's talk about diabetes. Cause I, I feel like I'm going to use it as, as just a quick example, not nothing detailed as y'all know. Um, so as a person who has, as a person who has diabetes, right? Not me, I'm not claiming it. That ain't it. But I'm just saying, because I know people who have diabetes. You have a primary physician. You go to your primary physician. They check your blood work. They check your your, your uh, glucose levels. Make sure that your sugar is okay. <laughs> um, but they make sure that your body is, is your numbers are um, low or as low as possible and that your body is functioning. So then you will have a secondary physician. This one would look specifically at whatever ailments is, is coming about based off of your, your diabetical issues. So say for instance, you may not be too bad off. You just, um, let's say you type two diabetes and you overproduce sugar. I think that's it, right? Type one is underproduced, type two overproduced. So let's say that that is the issue. That's the case. Well, because of that, um, overproduction, you may also need, um, pain therapy, or you may also have issues. A lot of times they tell you, tell people with diabetes to be careful with their feet. So you may go to a podiatrist or a, um, osteo, I don't know, whichever one the bone doctor. Ain't the podiatrist your foot? And then y'all, anyway, it's a lot of them out there, but you got, you have secondary, um, doctors depending on how bad an ailment is, right? <coughs> then um, when they talk about wound healing, some people who have 
um, diabetes. Y'all was about to go real old school, be like, you know them sugars when your sugar's bad. <laughs> so some people when they have diabetes, they actually have to be very um, particular about their feet and getting cr cuts and um, different things like that because it doesn't heal as quickly as it should. So this is why I tell you, you have the different uh, categories, the different types. Um, and then, of course, the severity of it may be different, too, because some individuals who who deal with sugar, you know, they start to get that <clears throat> uh, blackness around their feet. Um, if they get a cut, it doesn't heal as properly. It's a different um, take with the healing process. They may have to go through a more stringent um, cleaning. You get what I'm saying? Or a stringent um, uh, ritual is the word that's coming up, but that's not the word that I want to use. So sorry for the stuttering. But anyway, so ultimately, I just want to use that as an example. We're not going to focus on the diabetes part portion of it um, because, of course, everything that I do here is kind of leading us back to this, this balance between the physical and the spiritual. So... I, when I talk about healing, um, this is a holistic aspect of you, right? <laughs> so I put, excuse me, I think this one was from, dang, I did not write which dictionary I got this from. I do apologize, y'all, because I love to use Marilyn Webster's, but I think this one was um, Cambridge, maybe. I'm trying to think about where, where I pulled it, but it, it was either or. Um, Y'all know I love to do Mary, Mary, uh, Marion Webster, Cambridge, um, etymology.com, and then I use dictionary.com. Those are usually the four that I bounce uh, bounce through the most. Um, but anyway, they says that healing is a is a piece of rest, restoring, right? It's a it's a part of transforming a person, and it can be based off of their body, their mind, and their spirit. So. And um, it also takes, it also depends on the phase of a person's life. Um, so when I go into chakras, I'm going to come back around to the healing portion because um, later when we talk about chakras, they say that um, the chakras, each chakra's development is about seven years. But you have what is within the body, I mean, what is within the birthing system. So, for instance, this may this is when the woman is pregnant. You the way that you create the the way the chakras are created, and then of course after you have the woman has given birth, um, then the chakras are addressed a different way. So again, I'm gonna come back around to healing when we get to the chakras because um, it's gonna get a little bit more in depth for you. Um, so healing, the biggest thing I wanted to say was healing is an ongoing process. Um, to transcend suffering. I seen that was not in the dictionary somewhere. No. Oh, see y'all. Let me tell y'all what had happened. What had happened was I was listening to these people talking about, um, what is the thing called? Um, when they be, when they don't eat for a certain, certain amount of time, it's in my head and I can't even think about the um the title of it right now. But anyway, so I was listening to them talk about um not eating for an extensive amount of time. And I'm still trying to think of the words. Let me just let it go and come let it come to me. But anyway, uh, not fasting, but it's fasting. So that's the word that came. So that's the word we're going to go with. So um the, they were talking about fasting and they were talking about how fasting helps to heal the body and how, you know, you go through like a 72 hour fast and, and or more. Um, but that's when your body really starts to get into that uh, healing process. Um, and when the lady said that I was just sitting there, I'm like, dang, so, you know, you have to go through or transcend this period of suffering, right? in order for you to get into that 72 hour period. Cause 72 hours, that's like right at three days, right? A little bit more. That's a lie. It's way more than that. 24, 48. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I apologize. Yeah. But anyway, right at that cusp of three to four days, um, this is when your body starts to um, definitely shift. 
and where it's not really processing the foods anymore. So it gives your body more time to focus on the body and its healing processes. Um, y'all, if y'all think, oh, intermittent fasting, that's what it is. So let me do a shout out real quick. If you guys are interested in learning a lot more about intermittent fasting, please go check out Dr. Jamicia Braxton. She's here on or on YouTube. She's on Instagram and, and she's on TikTok. So please go and check her out. She has so much information provided about intermediate, intermediate fasting on YouTube. Um, she is a nurse practitioner. She's an amazing woman. I've, I've been listening to her um, for a while now and she just gives out a lot of great tips. Um, she's also on Clubhouse if you guys are on there as well. Um, just check her out because like I say, there's so much you can learn about intermediate fa intermediate fasting, um, diabetes, health, health, um, all that good stuff. So that was who I was listening to earlier today. And so, like I say, they, that's why I think I'm using those two as a, examples because of course, um, I've had experience with being, um, pre-diabetic, got rid of that, got all my numbers right. Um, and now I've gained weight back. But I've been listening to a lot of her stuff and she's just been reminding me of all the things I did to get that weight off. And I'm definitely going to um, start doing that stuff over again. I'm going to get, you know, get myself back in check. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, so the healing process, for the most part, what I want to talk to you guys about is healing. When you guys hear healing, people have this thing where they just think that it's a one time thing. Like, oh, yeah, I healed myself. I'm good to go. No, healing is always ongoing. I want you guys to know that. And just like this thing said, it could be body, mind, and spirit. Um, when you start healing your body, you, you, let me talk about myself. When I initially started in 2017, I believe, well, it goes back further than that. But in 2017, I was definitely um, geared in on making sure that I got rid of that pre-diet pre-diabetic numbers, making sure that I was doing everything I needed to. I got very strict. I was doing intermittent fasting. Um, I changed my diet. I was, um, I ate what I wanted to eat for the most part, but I was, um, I was pescatarian practically. And then I went into being pretty much vegetarian. Um, I, I don't say vegan cause I ate, I mean, I ate what I wanted. You know, I eat an egg or something every night again. And then it got to a point where that was too, it, it, the smell got me sick. And then I was eating fish and then it got to the point where it was too meaty. So, you know, when you start healing your body, um, the body will get rid of what it is that it, it does not want, that does not um, help it in, in its own healing process. You'll get to a certain point, like I say, well, I was only eating fruits and vegetables. I lost, I went from being almost 345 to 260. Um... So, like I said, it's, there's a lot of good in it. But when I went through that first set, that first mind, I mean, that first set of losing weight physically, my mindset was not there. So every time I look in the mirror, I still saw the plus size girl, right? And I, and I was just like, I'm doing all this hard work. I work out twice a day. I do, you know, I eat, you know, healthy. I do, I'm doing everything plus, and I'm not seeing the, the drastic changes that other people claim that they have or whatever else. And so, um, between my mental not being where it needed to be and then having, um, other people, other influences being like, oh, well, you may, you may want to stop doing that. Cause that's not healthy. That's not this, that's not that the other, um, I allowed them to get into my head even more. And I chose, um, to start incorporating certain foods back into my, my eating habit. And then I chose to not work out as, as I had been doing. Um, and like I say, I, I gained a lot of, I did not gain all the weight back, but I gained a lot of it back. Um, so when I tell you about healing, it is definitely has to be across the board because if your mindset is not there, it's not prepared if you, and I'm going to talk about mindset, um, on another, another video, but if you're not mentally ready for the changes, when, you, when things start to shift and happen, it's going to be easy for you to go back because your mind isn't there. I think the mind has to be there first. And now 
knowing that and now doing the mental work, I noticed that I actually saw a lot of great changes. I saw the shifts in my body. I saw um, the physical abilities that I was able to do. And then now it's like, okay, we can do this again, right? I can get back to that point. And so, like I said, I'm telling you, you heard it here first. It's gonna happen because my mind's right. I had to come up on a chat to get my mind right. Okay, so yeah, y'all. Um, I just really had to do that. So when it says the body, the mind, and the spirit, um, spiritually, I had to get some stuff together too. I had to go through some self discoveries and understand stuff at a different level. And and that's why I tell you guys that healing has different levels as well. Because when you first start, you like what I was telling you guys about doing that shadow work, right? When you first start to get that exposure you start seeing a lot of triggers a lot of issues and again if your mindset isn't strong to make it through or if you don't have that good support system and i don't think i've talked about that here but i have in my class if you don't have a good support system um it's definitely easy for you to backslide what they say backslide it's easy for you to get back to where you were before because it's it's a full um exchange of energy it's a full exchange of physical mental spiritual and energy that has to shift holistically and like i said once you get to a new level you're going to start cleaning up that mindset on that level and cleaning your body on that level and then doing the spiritual work right to to understand yourself at that level and then say okay well now i can stretch and go to the next step right and in when you get to a higher level you're able to look down and see some of the stuff that you missed that was on that previous level or even see some of the stuff that you were able to avoid. Um, and again, you go through the same learning processes like what I was telling y'all on the shadow work. Um, you got a point, you got a light, but when that light starts to move, the shadow shifts and changes. And you know, if you guys have not already looked at that um, autonomy of a shadow, go look at it so you can start seeing what's being highlighted, what is a low light, what is, you know, whatever it is, it changes and adjusts. I can put on some makeup right now and although I look good, you got to always talk talk sweet to yourself, baby, because she's good. She's cute. But although I look good, I know I can look better because then I can start highlighting certain attributes about myself. I can start shadowing it out or dimming, you know, other pieces, other features that I may not want to be so profound or, or, or seen, right? So... That's the same thing. You have to take all these different aspects that you learn and put them as well into that healing process. Um, in one of my, in my free gifts, so if you guys go to jamikasfreegift.com and I'm going to try to put that in the um, description. If you go there, I did a, um, a PDF document that you can print off and it talks about the healing process. Um, and in that, I give an example of taking your hair out. So I'm a black girl. That's what they say, you know. I was about to go down a whole attention, y'all. I'd be having to reel it on back in. So <laughs> anyway, so I'm a woman of color. And our hair, when we braid our hair down to the scalp, right, it's a process. You're taking pieces Y'all, yeah, I'm sitting up here like, dang, I should have brought some weave so I could have showed y'all. But say you braiding hair, you usually have three pieces of hair and those pieces of hair have strings of hair, right? And you're starting to tie and bend them together and mix and match and, and put it together, right? So imagine those three strings, maybe it's your parents, it's you, and then it's a situation that has taken place. And you weave all of those together to get that braid, the parent, the child, the situation. Well, that situation might have been good. It might have been bad. Who knows? It was a learning opportunity. And what happens is when we go to untangle our hair, right, or we go to unbraid it, we have to also detangle it. And so in that process of detangling, um, you find that you may have 
straight hairs. You may have hairs that have split ends. You may have hairs that have um, tied and knotted together and it takes a little bit more to take it out. That is the same thing that happens with your emotions. You deal with you, you deal with your parents, and you deal with the situation that is there. And there's so much intermingling with those aspects because it's, it's things that have happened when you was a child, when you were a teenager, as an adult. And now as an adult, when you go through, through this healing process, you're trying to take the situation and look at it. You're trying to take out what your parents may have gone through, take out your own, um, your own self and, and what you felt that was going on, what actually happened, what you remember, what you don't remember. Um, other people, when you have a conversation with other people and them giving their own perspective on that same issue, um, all of those things are all intertwined. And like what I say with the healing process, you're trying to separate it all out. But just like hair, right? Even though it's three strands, those three strands have so many infinite um, feelings to them, emotions to them, outlooks, expectations, all these other things that it is a continuous process. And so even once you think you've healed from that situation, there may be something else that ha that happens or had happened that kind of gets crossed up in it. So I like to say it as a as a relationship. When you're doing a relation, when you're creating a relationship with your friends, with your significant other, a lot of times when you happen to come into a trigger or an issue, and I don't know if we did triggers yet, so I'm gonna have to do a video on that first. But when you come into a trigger or an issue, right? You're not just healing from that particular issue. You're healing from that issue and everything that's tied together with that. So if you're feeling hurt, you're going to have to deal with hurt from that moment, go backwards and go forward, right? Go to the past or when you were hurt before in situations similar to it. And then how are you going to respond in the future to these same things? Because that process is, is continuous or when hurt is mixed with abandonment. So you don't like the fact of being hurt, but why don't you like being hurt? Because when I was hurt as a child, I felt abandoned or I dealt with this. And so that's all I'm trying to say is that it's so much in the healing process. So many little small wires that get held together that we don't even realize how in depth it can be when you start to go through your, your process of healing. So of course, again, it's not... I, I, I had an accident, uh, incident, and I healed from it. It is a continuous process. Something that goes on that is um, constantly reoccurring or occurring um, because you just learn how to go through it, maneuver through it. Don't go around it because when you go around it, you start to hide it. It goes into the shadows and then you don't deal with it. You don't adjust it, but actually go through it, work your way through it so that you are more cognizant from bringing it from that subconscious area into the conscious so that you can really deal with it and eventually get to a place where you you notice it and, and you're more conscious and aware about that unconscious involvement that you can go down into the subconscious and actually start redoing some of the programming. But I feel like that was a whole lot. I don't know, but y'all let me know. If it makes sense to y'all, please write in the comments. Let me know if you want to hear more on healing, the healing process. Write in the comments. Let me know. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, write in the comments and let me know. If you haven't already, please like the video. Subscribe to me. Please subscribe. And y'all have a conversation with me. Um, let's see what else we can learn about and talk and go through together so that we can heal as a unit. All right. I love y'all. Um, I'm going to go get me some tea to get my life together. <laughs> Y'all have a good, good, good evening, a good morning, a good night, whatever it is where you are. All right. Love y'all. Be you.